episode of 2007. We are doing SME 12, Batista versus Shamrock. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then I will get a uh, thumbnail done, and it should be... Uh, SME 11, whoop. live on the YouTubes. That's it, yes. Excellent. Uh, undisputed on YouTube, hopefully. But no, no it's, it's, it's I'm not giving ultimate, myself hope. not undisputed. That was the, the one a while ago. Ah, uh, whichever. They're all the same. They're all the same show. Let's be real. Um, joking. Uh, Homecoming! That's what it was we? yesterday. Homecoming. Oh, yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah. We're stealing an AEW gimmick, though, for that. No, Raw did Raw Homecoming in this era, okay? Bro, relax. Ah, uh, that's not true. <laughs> that is true. I John, have John seen Cena it. wrestled Ric Flair. I have I... seen it, and it was real, but... But no. it's not true. <laughs> I refuse. Uh, Madison Square. Existence. Yes, the square in Madison. Go. Excellent. Okay, so I had a lot of thoughts for what could open this show, and I think it, uh, under most circumstances, it would be the six-man. But because I want an angle where the six-man is discussed earlier in the show we'll put the sixth man on second to last so then my pitch for the open becomes henry umaga that was yeah my first thought cool three minutes yep them just throwing bombs yep uh i have no idea who should win this it should probably be mark to go after Try, but it could very well be Umaga, and then Mark builds back up to going after Try for Survivor Series. Alternatively, Umaga could just go after Try. That kind of sounds fun. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ways we could spin this. I, I yeah, yeah. Fuck. Um, <laughs> it could also be a no contest as this gets out of hand. Fucking heat, man. Hell yeah. Um, hmm. I don't and even know not, what I want. And it wouldn't be like a no contest where we continue the feud. They would just like nod at each other the next tomorrow or on Monday and be like, yeah, I get you. You're a large man. And then they part ways having not settled their differences. I'm fairly sure these guys feuded a while ago, to be fair. They did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, November, September of six. Yeah. So in reality, the best one is probably just a match for one of these guys wins, but that means we have to pick. Interested in that Umaga Triple H match? I won't lie. I think if if we're doing that, whether it's at Survivor Series or before, Umaga should win this. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do that then. You're the only one who's expressed any desire, so let's go for it. Yeah, I, I think I'd rather see that than... Why you, well, you just slow click build slow build? build. Let's go! <laughs> let's go! Slow build! Yeah, that's that's real. We're putting that in there. What I do want, I want is wild brawl, I think. I want them to take it easy, alright? Don't hurt yourselves. <laughs> yeah, pace yourselves over these three minutes, boys. Wow, what a, what a bitch. Give Strong him a... This guy. Keep strong, I think, for this one. Nice. Maga, you're going to win, but you need to make Mark look really, really strong. I could just put him over. Nope. Yeah, no. I literally, I could I could just lose this, really. <laughs> no. No. Nope. You're going to win, but you, but it's really important. You need to make Mark look really strong. Um... Oh, Amelia, I... 9896, thank you for the sub. Uh, I think Triple H Dreamer is the third to la last match on this card. Yep. I'm thinking it's got to be Idol I MVP think that's next. A, yeah, I think you're right. Oh, this... shit, announcers. I'll be a son of a bitch. Yeah, that's fine. Well, we caught it early. I'll much, be a son of a bitch. Much like Hepatitis. If you catch it early, it's a lot nicer. What's it, What are we doing here? Uh, 
flare, coal, and lawler. Sure. Its announce table is painful, <laughs> fucking horny. God damn. That is true. <laughs> Coal in a strange way, but also still, yes. Can barely ever catch the live streams, but spent the past week binging all the VODs as they go up on YouTube while I work. Love this save. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Um, There's a lucrative contract on a poll. Yep. And the, the loser will be fired. Let's not forget that. Stipulation. Yeah, it's it's feast or famine. If you, Tucker. I'm gonna say if you lose, if the other person gets the contract, you have to go up and get the contract hanging on the other side. That's the loser contract. You sign that, and your contract is null and void. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's you. not call anybody a loser contract here, Tucker. Let's not disrespect our own talent. Okay, let's Real. relax. Real. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been a day. I can make jokes now. It's interesting you seem to take, like, exception to that line. When that's the thing that no, I feel the most. I it's no. super fucked. I, I agree with you in principle. If it wasn't a guy who made effects in zero ways, if it wasn't uh, a guy I give zero shits about, and if it wasn't standard heel shit. Like, I went through it with you, and I went line by line what he was saying, and I was like, none of that is actually burying the guy. Half of it's responding to the promo he gave the night before. The other half is just shit a heel would say. That's the bad guy. He's not meant to be a guy that we agree with. <laughs> Literally like, haha, your wife wears the pants in the family and I make more money than you, bitch. That's real shit. Yeah, like, that's exactly <laughs> what he say should that. be saying. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I, this is the thing I, I don't want to go into this with you because this isn't a podcast but like you yeah no no you didn't shit talk the Roman Reigns John Cena angle you didn't shit the, the John Cena rock angle right you didn't shit the CM Punk Triple H angle right and it's all the same shit as that. <laughs> it really is. If it, if it, like, I, 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 if you weren't mad about the real thing, because that's what I think is happening, is that there's something you should be mad about, so you're mad. But then you're also mad about all the rest of the shit that you shouldn't be mad about, just because you're in a state <laughs> of being mad. Fair, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, how long is this? It has some heft to it, but isn't long. Um, six? Yep. Cool. Who's going to Raw? <laughs> well, MVP's going over, brother. Let's go. Well, I guess we can talk about it a little bit. My idea is that Idol comes back with, like, a masked gimmick. That could work for MVP, but I think Idol's got the range to pull it off better. Mm, I like that. I like that the hurricane's new sidekick no i was thinking just like a generic luchador mask. yeah 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 i like it <laughs> yeah. uh so now it has to be the american heavyweight championship tables match yep oh man he's gonna come back as fucking mr america four idolo estefan <laughs> Dude, that's based actually thank you um this Feels fairly long. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Like a 9, 10, 11, 12 -ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? Maybe 9. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm, Shark I'm, wins. I, I, <laughs> I'm not worried at all for this match. I think this is going to be fun. Um, oh, yeah, I, I agree. Open, overbooked. Doug does win in the end. Hell yeah. Um,. The Bash Babe can probably help Doug win. Hell, <laughs> hell yeah. You know, yep. the shark. The shark. Oh, that should be a Kevin Nash gimmick that he always calls him the shark. And he's like, Kevin, it's just, it's just shark. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. I'm calling you the shark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your name is not shark. Show me where on a birth oh. certificate your name is shark oh you legally shit. changed your name to yeah. shark your name is legally shark that's uh-huh you're a fucked up guy <laughs> i represent the shark nation you stay away from me actually <laughs> i don't like you actually yeah i don't want you on my roster in fact 
Triple H, <laughs> Tommy Dreamer, let's, let's go. go. I actually think this is going to be tremendously based. Triple H is like, I'm, I'm going to give you a, ch a chance here, Tommy. We're going to put on a show, brother. We're going to steal the show, brother. Yeah, Dreamer um, has, Dreamer has one like really great quality, and it's that he doesn't die. Nice. He just refuses. And that will be the story of the match. Yeah, I assumed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's a ref bump, and it gets extreme. <laughs> then he does die. <laughs> and then Triple H hits him in the head with a sledgehammer, and he dies. How long is this? I don't know. What are you thinking? I don't know, because, like, my first thought is, like, a... Uh... 16? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, my, yeah. My head went there. I went 15, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. I had that number, I, and yeah. I was like, I can't say 15, because that's the that's the slow build number, and they'll know what I'm doing. Well, some matches have to go 15. <laughs> can't just avoid 15, then it becomes... No, then 14. 16 becomes the new 15. That's okay. They won't catch on to that. I already have... <laughs> I, because I told you. I know. No, no. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trish, let's just set Trish Trash to be at ringside, even though she probably will be oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Just in case. Yep. Oh, man. Survivor Series, dude. Doug in the Bash Bay versus Triple H and Trish. Oh, my. It's my world has been opened. Um, that's crazy. That's a great idea. Overbook that match. It's Triple H. That's true. That's true. Also, see if Dreamer's willing to take a crazy bump. Oh, he is. You know he is, man. He's the. He's down for. Oh no, he's too old now. He's too. I'm too old for that shit. He's like, I do it like a couple years ago, man. But <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm 36 I'm now, 36 dog. I'm gonna die. Years old. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna die. I will die in that ring, and I refuse. God. ECW aged all those guys like fucking crazy. Yep. Like, you could convince me Dreamer was 46 here, and I'd be like, that's about right for 07. Yeah, I'd believe that. Rob Van Damme's like 60. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, he, man doesn't age, he just becomes grayer. Six man, no holds barred, elimination tag team match. Holy fuck. <laughs> I'll I think take, we can do I'll take elimination or yeah. I'm gonna say I'm like I think we have to do one of the two of them. Uh, what's the difference between this and elimination? Or... Would be if you get pinned, your whole team is out. Total elimination is you can mm. you can you know eliminate individuals. Right. I, be right. I believe that that rings a bell in my head. Um. Yeah. So it's it's Charlie Haas, Sheldon Benjamin, and. Oh Manu yeah, yeah. Versus, Base God Manu, um, Marcus Corvon, Dolph Ziggler, and Kenny Dykstra. Manu, Manu. Twenty seven. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I my I envision this as a long ass war where they they brawl th throughout the arena for at least twenty minutes before even one person gets eliminated. <laughs> okay, and it's bloody, sure. and it's 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 a war. It because these three men on the right have been in this company now for almost a full year, and they've never lost a trip a, a, a six man tag. Uh, as this trio, uh, and they have terrorized this division, making enemies out of everybody, slowly but surely. Um, and yeah, the, I, I feel like this is heat. This is a battle. This is a war. Um, and if these three on the left want to take their streak, they're gonna have to really take it, take it to them. Um, yeah, I, I, we can go a little shorter, but I think this should definitely go twenty three plus. 
Yeah, pick a number. Let's go 25. Sure, yeah. What's worth my inspiration? I checked this. My inspiration, I think, went 30. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Goddamn. Yeah. Who's winning this? I mean, the, the streak is over. Oh, as my. Manu pins Kenny Dykstra to finish it off. Hopefully, that's how that works. That cat's very happy. Yeah, I hear. No, I think she wants out, actually. The cat does not want to be involved with this six man. No, no, holds no she, elimination she's like, bad idea, match. man. Get out of here. A slow build hit. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. I think um, I, I think Manu could do all out for 30 minutes. <laughs> Let's get Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, and Elijah Burke there. Yep. Let's ask Kenny Dykstra. And yeah, let's ask Kenny Dykstra to take a crazy bump to start with. Yep. Then Based. I guess Charlie is the next guy I'd want to ask. No. Shelton? No, Shelton's too good to take a crazy bump. He'll do it. Da -da. Uh, I think that's it then? Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, is there any other notes we want to add to this? Slow build. I don't think so, right? Yeah, it looks alright to me. We could overbook it. But I, I, I think Shelton will be fine to just try and pull this all together. Yeah. And it's meant to be crazy. Did that yep. go through without any complaints, really? Yeah. Can I see Manu's over this? Yeah. Can I, can I see Dykstra's? Are you like the... The, like the best guy in the world, Kenny, or are you like can you not Kenny's look past Shelton best. Benjamin? <laughs> That's true. He's just like Shelton's over there, though. Yeah, I mean, it's I can't beat, I can't beat Shelton. All right, main event. Main event. My number was seven, and my idea for this one was, it starts with some some back and forth, some uh, distanced fighting where Ken's like trying to take Batista down and keep him in the clinch. And then at some point, Batista um, manages to get on top and just rocks Shamrock. Absolutely fucking thunder cunts him in the head. And then Shamrock, by, by pure instinct, is going to lock in a key lock, a Kimura. Um, yep. And he's going to hold it for all it's worth. And we're going to sell that. Because Shamrock is like barely conscious right now, but he's still wrenching this key lock and it might just be enough to hold the title. And then Batista will like power out of it, bounce off the ropes, hit a spear, and then, you know, shake the ropes and hit him with a Batista bomb and reclaim the title. Hell yeah. That sound good to you? Because, yep. yeah, I was, I was pitching that rather than telling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I like it. I like it. Cool. Uh, are they in the story, or do we need to continue it via note? No, I think they're good. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, okay. The world is watching. The world is watching. Dum, dum, dum. Watch on. And calm check in stuff. All right, Ken. You know what? You can. I'll. I'll kill you. Actually. Mm -hmm. Don't Delete look at me like that, kid. Video game. Delete it off your PC then, if you want to kill it so bad. Hmm. Hmm. Oh god. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Commit to the bit. Commit to the goddamn bit. Shit. Um uh let's book in the one angle that I know I want to do, which is Regal and Haas having a conversation. Yep. That's Girl, Charles Robinson. Robinson. <laughs> Hell yeah.
Um, I guess six. Sure. Maybe our truth and the children off screen because they're being talked about. Sure. Uh, that can go like in the front half of the show somewhere. That looks good where you're placing it. I, it could go after that match, but it, it could also stay there. Up to you. Okay. Whatever. Then we need an angle where Haas introduces Manu. Hell yeah. You can just Haas on end Manu not rated four minutes. Yep. New DMLS member. Oh my god. Uh, not confirmed. He's just their tag partner tonight. New guy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Some guy. He's here. He's a third... The uh, second, well, he's a multi generational superstar. Um, a little two minute package before that, hyping up who the new breed are and what they've done and why this match is important. Yep. I think two minutes on that. Sure. I put that before the new guy. Yeah. Yep. Maybe a three minute package for the main going over yep. how we've gotten here. Yep. I love it. Um, We should do a little one-minute package for Steven's MVP, for sure. Yep, like it. We should do the raw rebound, Triple H ethering dreamer. Yep, I like it. Sell mania tickets. Uh, yep. One of the SmackDown announcers should go and interview Ray in the hospital. And Ray can be like, I don't know why he did it. I'm upset. Real. This always seems to happen with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Shawn Michaels. <laughs> he did this to me. <laughs> he started off a bad chain of events. Uh, unless there's anything missing, that could that could be that. Yeah, I don't know what else is missing. Nothing really, right? We've got everything for this show. Yeah, um, there's obviously stuff we could do, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we need to do. Like we could advertise these matches, but I I think it's fine to leave it. Cat talking a lot. Uh, yeah, we could just leave it. I'm alright with that if you are. Yeah, all I do is, uh, in the world is watching, continue every storyline we have. Yep, good show. Good show. I think if I remember correctly, you can do the click, press down on your keyboard thing here. Uh. Yeah, there you go. A little easier. Just a tad. Cool. 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 Let me... Let this cat out here really quick. Sure. She's being crazy. <clears throat> All right. Batista Shamrock. Oh, little 
Rat cat, goddamn. All right. Damn, dude, rat cat. Oh rat wait, cat. I just realized the raw rebound should the the Triple H raw rebound. I th I mean, unless you disagree, I was thinking it goes right before the match. Oh sure. And then, like after the rebound, Dreamer can be making like can have a jobber entrance. <laughs> you know, we can do the raw rebound while Got Dreamer's him. entering. <laughs> Got him. How long has Shamrock had the belt for? Around a month. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, a month exactly. Days. Yeah. Not exactly. But yeah. Would have been a month last Tuesday, if my math is correct on that. Oh, yeah, right. Because that's... Or a month yesterday on tape delay. Which is something yeah. I hadn't considered. But our reigns don't take into account tape delay, I think. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah that shit gets fucking stupid. Anyway. <laughs> It just Ooh, does. Like, when I'm you're, like, tape uh, yeah, delay versus uh, not tape delay versus... I'm interested to hear your take on this, then. For a taped wrestling show, should the title reign be considered ended slash started when it, when it happened or when it aired? I mean, it should be when it airs. Like, it should okay. be. Yeah. But that's uh, not how... Do most companies do it that way? I don't think they do. Well, WWE always does it that way. Oh, that's fair. Maybe, maybe you are right. I want to say that they haven't, though. There may maybe time, there's like with what there was a time specific in this specific for... era where um they sometimes did title changes on tour shows, and that would get a bit fucky. Right, when... because it would be like a title. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because they would do SmackDown on Tuesday and then do like. SmackDown house shows during the week, so you get like it would mainly happen on the European tours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, but generally, I think the reason why you think WWE maybe are a bit fucky with it is because whenever anybody else reports these reigns, they're always like, "This is recognized by the WWE as being this," but because they will do it based on when they lost it, whereas the WWE will always do it based on when it aired. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, not, just, not just the icy belt. All the belts. All the belts? Damn. I didn't realize that. Uh, yeah, are we good to go here, buddy? Yeah, I'm good. All right. In three, two, one. Hello, folks. Welcome back to more uh, TW, I guess. That's yeah. that's what we do. That's what we do here most of the time. Sometimes, um, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't now. Yeah, crazy. Uh, it's SME 12. It's Batista versus Shamrock. Is there anything we even really need to get into before this kicks off? I think this is one of the least setup needed SNMEs ever because the setup was last episode. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, isn't it? We if people saw, yeah, Dave and uh, Dave and Ken get into it and watch, watch Batista win the whole goddamn tournament. Yeah, and uh, this is this is the. This, this is, is where the result. It, it happens. Yeah, this is where it's going to happen. There you go. Can we are in. Uh, reclaim the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Maybe. We yeah. are in Madison Square Garden. The world's most famous arena. I, I guess we just do it. it. It's so weird to not have like a ramble beforehand or something. That's. We could have. Do you want to talk about WrestleMania? No. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> All right, let's get into it then. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, the 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 world is watching. You know. Also, actually, thing. we can take this as an opportunity. Everyone watching should should review these storylines that are on screen right now. And if any of them take your fancy, if you're like, "Oh, I wonder what that is," check out the TVs over on uh, or Twitch.tv/slash Matsudairo or type Matsudairo vods into YouTube. Real. Oh, wait, no, we don't do the Patreon reads on the SNMEs, do we? Or do we? No, no, no. we don't on uh, the SNMEs. We're, no. we're good. But thank you to all our patrons, though. Link is in the description. Yeah, I, I did think about it as well. I was like, there's nothing to show here, eh? I'm like, no, there literally isn't. Damn. Damn. Um, we check in with our commentary team for the night. It's Michael Cole and his new, as of this week, uh, SmackDown announced partner, Ric Flair and uh, Jerry Lawler. Woo! Well, Michael, Jerry Lawler tonight. is also there. 
Ken Shamrock takes on Dave Bautista for the World Heavyweight Championship, but none of it matters because neither of them are going to be as good as the man Ric Flair, and none of them have ever beaten me. Woo! Ric Flair is working his way into the commentary role. Uh, <laughs> might take a bit. Might take a bit. We'll see. Um, are we good to kick things off with a clash of titans, if you will? But- oh yeah, the comms are going to talk about our first match, actually, and introduce it. So, what is our first match, Tucker? On Monday, for the first time in months, we had seen Umaga. Oh, he's geez. back. Watch yours. And he has targeted the man who, in some ways, you know, yeah. uh, encroached on his territory a little bit. You know what I mean? Another big monster of a man. Uh, he went right after Mark Henry, uh, the world's strongest. I almost said the world's strongest animal. What the hell is that? Holy. It's a goaded tag team, if I've ever heard one. Based, actually, yeah. Um, but yeah, the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, um, against the Samoan bulldozer, Umaga. Okay. Yeah, if you Fight. if you read the dirt sheets, this this match has a lot of uh, IRL implications, but uh, we won't get into that here. But l- needless to say, these two men have history. So here we go. These two men get in there, let's throw bombs, and they they slap meat. This is Romero's first match in uh, like ten months. So yeah, I you know give him a you know, we didn't we didn't we didn't stretch him too hard on this one, but yeah, they just throw strikes, they just run into each other a bunch of times until one man falls, and it just happens to be Mark Henry, and he picks him back up, and he hits him with a sumbo and spike. And I like to think the big move in this match is uh like they they like run into each other a bunch of times, and Umaga realizes he has to do something a little bit different, so he hits him with a few chops, and he, like forces him back to the ropes, and he gets in nice and close, and he hits him with an Irish rip. And as as Henry's coming back from the ropes, he picks him up for a massive Samoan drop. There you go, you got it for a Samoan spike. Uh, that's what I was hoping. I was like, cool. big Samoan drop here. <laughs> you know, guy guy Mark Henry size is not used to getting yeah. his own weight dropped on himself. You know what I mean? Yep. So Umaga wins this absolute slugfest. Um, we'll have to see what that means going forward. Yeah. Oh. We get a video package for our next match. It's Montel Vontavious Porter versus Idle Stevens. MVP had spent the past month or so uh, trying to coach Idle to get him a better SmackDown contract. Um, this involved, you know, many things such as beefing with a midget, trying to cover up beefing with a midget, only for <laughs> beefing with the midget to be discovered and approved by the general manager of SmackDown, Kevin Nash. Um, long story short, Idle Stevens ended up with a uh, fairly lucrative contract, uh, the biggest contract in SmackDown history, but it's on the line tonight. That contract is up in the corner on a pole, unsigned. MVP, who did indeed coach through Idle Stevens through this whole process, uh, feels he is entitled to that money. Well, first of all, he he just wanted a cut. But when Stevens was being a bitch about it, he said, you know what? I want the whole damn contract. And here we go. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I I, I did listen to most of it, but did you mention the other stipulation to this match? Oh, fuck. No, I totally forgot about that again. Fuck. You you pop off now that you've remembered it. Uh, The loser of this match has no contract. Fuck them. They will be fired. Send them home. Yeah. They're done. They're out of here. Nash shared the idea of putting the contract on the line. He thought it was a great idea, but to add a little bit of spice, the loser will be fired. Hell yeah. You mentioned it was Uh, on a poll, right? Yes, I did. Cool, cool, cool. cool. This is a poll match, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Who will retrieve the lucrative contract? Who will go home? Fire. The crowd chants fire Russo. (laughs) He's back. Yeah, we, He's back, we, killed, baby. we killed Vince. We wrote him off so we could get rid of him and replace him with the other Vince. Hell yeah. You killed the man, but not the idea. <laughs> this could be good. I just realized what that context was saying <laughs> that in that situation. <laughs> Whoops. This could be good. Whoops. Uh, yeah. Let's see how it does. Let's see how it does. Yeah. Nice. Boys. Nice. Hell yeah. I don't know um, how that happened, but hey. Wait. MVP. How did we get the pinfall <laughs> win? 
that's a good question. How does that work? I believe there might you might have you might have selected the type of pole match where there's an item for usage, and there might have been like a retrieval pole match of some kind that you could have instead picked. Either it doesn't way, matter. It doesn't matter. He yeah. pulls down the contract <laughs> and then kicks Idol Stevens in the face and pins him, and the refs like, "You don't have to." All right, I'll I'll and then he sure. Signs okay. the contract on his lifeless corpse. There you go. MVP just became a lot bit richer. Yep, he already had the most lo- lucrative contract in SmackDown history, and now he's done it again. Hell this man yeah. keeps winning. Local billionaire. <laughs> His, you, the doctors will hate him. His secret on how he keeps swindling a Real? billionaire out of money. Number and Idol four will shock you. Idol Stevens is going home. To the TNA, last, probably, or something. The last vestige of Team Dean has been excised from this roster. They are MVP, gone. MVP's going after Vanessa Vane next, baby. Hell yeah. He'll kill them all. <laughs> okay, so. Backstage, Charlie and Regal are going to meet up. And Charlie's going to say... Uh, but first of all, to catch people, well, actually, I'll do the. Pro- Why don't you catch people up on what's been going on with William Regal lately? Because that'll make a- this angle will make a lot more sense once people know. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think about what to divulge here. Um, uh, Every- I, don't, uh, I don't think anything. DMLS. So go ha- go ham. Well, DMLS at the moment is kind of fucked. Um, oh, they've not been winning a lot lately. Uh, well, and it kind of feels like the, the the walls are coming apart a little bit on the whole thing. Um, Charlie and Regal have had a couple different arguments in front of the children. Um, and I mean, the children are, are, are doing their best, but I mean, they're not. They're not really there yet. It. MLS is in a tough spot. <laughs> um. Lately, um, they've kind of been re-embroiled with the stuff with the new breed. Um, they've continued to fight them for most of this year. Um, and, and that new breed team is still pretty much unbeaten, right? Like, I mean, I know that specific... Um, I, I know there's a specific grouping of them that is definitely undefeated. But even for the pretty, most part. Yeah, they're pretty good in, outside of that group. And they're currently the tag team champions in doubles action. So they're a very effective unit, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like, to me at least, um, Charlie Haas and William Regal don't really know where to take this thing. Um, what's been happening to also, William Regal lately? I was going to say, also. <laughs> that's kind of what's going William, on. William Regal many months ago had hired Randy Orton to try to kill Vince McMahon. He instead ended up killing Shane McMahon, who later on we found out that was maybe also a good thing, um, which was strange. Uh, if you haven't watched a certain episode of the of, uh, on the VODs, you, you'll maybe want to see that to figure that one out. Um, but, but regardless, being number one enemy of the former Mr. McMahon... Um, William Regal was attacked by our truth who has been going around for months attempting to figure out what to do with his life now that his friend is gone. His friend and boss are both gone. Uh, they were the same guy. <laughs> um, yeah. And what has our truth decided to do? I don't know. Okay. He, so, he attacked William Regal on Raw. Yeah, our truth is. Oh, did I not get to that? My bad. I don't think you did. You were just like our truth. You're right. You're right. For a few months, to figuring out what to do. You're right. You're right. Our truth has started to attack Vince McMahon's uh, enemies, the the people who had helped to take him out in our truth's approximation. Even though we figured out who had done that, and it wasn't any of these people. But you know, um, the children did their best to try to help. Um, but again, somebody is as, as skilled as our truth. Um, you know, what chance do they have? He he beat up Regal. On Matt Morgan Raw. was also beating him up. That's true. Matt Morgan also like was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll join in. <laughs> uh, 
uh, okay, right. So these two have a conversation, and Charlotte's gonna be like, "Hey, yeah, you know, obviously there's a lot going on tonight, uh, but I just want to make sure with what happened to you on Monday that you don't need any help with your business because I don't want to be here taking Ted and uh, and Cody, uh, Shelton, and and of course the new guy, and leaving you all alone if you're gonna be in danger, right? So I just want to make sure." You're good tonight if you, you know, if your business is sorted. And Rue's like, hey, I can take care of my own business, Sunshine. Tonight, you've got an opportunity to do something special. And I want to make sure that you're all focused for it. So don't you be worried about little old me. Because I've been in this business a very long time. And if our truth thinks that he can scare me away with, a, you know, a few light taps on the, on the chin, I think uh, he's got another thing coming. I'll be all right. You got a big match tonight. You take Ted, you take Cody, you show them what a winner looks like, and you end the streak of those upstart young brats. I'm sure, it's like, yeah, you got it. You got it, old man. Hell yeah. So what what do we what do we know about this match coming up so far? So our co-main event tonight is a six-man, no-holds-barred elimination tag team match between the undefeated Marcus Corvon, Dolph Ziggler, and uh, Ken- Kenny Dykstra. <laughs> the you know undefeated it. trio of Marcus <laughs> Corvon, Dolph Ziggler, and Kenny Dykstra, just to make that clear. And they're going to be taking on a reformed Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin and a mystery third partner. Which I think everybody thought would be Regal. So what is this about? Yeah, it's got to be one of these kids who's Could stepping be. up. Well, actually, I think I think uh, Charlie specifically said on Raw that it wouldn't be we'll, any of these kids. We'll we'll send we'll send Cody out, and then and then somebody will come out and take his spot. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Does that sound good? Sound good, to everybody? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Big doves all around. Okay, moving on. Uh, I don't think we're right into a match, are we? I don't think so. I don't think so. We are. We are. It is the the United (laughs) States Championship, uh, as Doug Basham calls it, the American Heavyweight Championship. It is a tables match. Uh, Doug Basham, I I don't remember, did we go over this in, uh, Ultimate? We might have. Uh, Doug Basham pissed in the ocean, and that pissed off Shark, because that's where he and all his friends live, in the ocean. Um, from there, uh, Shark and Doug fought to a... No contest? Shark won by a count out. Oh, Shark won via count out. Um, did Shark put him through the table to get the count out? Yes. He did. So okay, he that's what I remember. Table. He tries to get him back in the ring and he fails to yes. do so. And I remember now. He goes around telling everybody he beat Doug Basham. And then Doug Basham's like, well, you didn't beat me. All you did was put me through a table. So I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to give you a shot at the U.S. title where the only thing you need to do is put me through a table. So yeah, these two fight in a tables match. It's pretty heated, I feel like, for these oh, two. Yeah. They've, they've got some stuff going on between them. Uh, Shark's a big, big man, but that just means the table explosion is much bigger when he goes through it. And still. Big Doug forever. Big Bash Doug forever. out. Todd Grisham. Is at a local medical facility. He's here with Ray Mysterio. Ray, after the attack from your former friend Chavo Guerrero on SmackDown, how do you? I, I don't. I don't know, man. How do you? How do you feel? I guess I don't. I don't know. Well, my knee's in pain. Um, my left knee, uh, and I'm. I'm just. Oh, I'm, no. I'm. I'm really hurt, Todd, because. You know, I, I, not only did we not beat Deuce and Domino on Friday, but but also I, I lost a good friend. I think I don't know. I'm just confused and I'm sad and I'm hurt in my knee. You should you should try to get better, Ray. Thanks, Todd. Back I to will. you guys at the arena. We get a recap of footage from Raw. Um, Triple H just absolutely. Going in on Tommy Dreamer. Uh, Triple H has been our Intercontinental Champion since SummerSlam now. Um, I think this is his first defense, isn't it? Uh, it might be, yeah. It might be. I believe, I believe it's his first defense. Um, Tommy Dreamer stepped up. 
I honestly did not think we'd see him again after uh, on the Last Stand show. Uh, he died. <laughs> he was he was murdered by a bunch of goons. Uh, but the thing with Tommy Dreamer is that he somehow manages to not die, uh, no matter what you do to him. Um, and Triple H basically said, ah, that's fine by me, I'll kill you. I think Triple H also said, who? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Intercontinental title on the line. Uh, could Tommy Dreamer shock the world? I mean, could he's got he that... roll back the years? He's got that unkillable spirit in him. He's got the the heart. He's got the, he's got the passion. Um... And ECW was known for having workhorse television champions, right? Hell yeah. Hell so, yeah. Tommy Dreamer, top tier workhorse guy. <laughs> maybe he could rescue the belt from big a big star of Triple H. I would say more importantly, it's about um Oh, I don't know what exactly the word. It's about the it's about how somebody carries that title. You know what I mean? Mm. Um Triple H is very well, honestly, I'll, I'll say I'll say it. He's he's quite dismissive to the title, even. I don't think it's his I, own. Oh, go on, go on. I mean, it's his own championship, and he's what defended it how many times? It's he's, not about he's the too defenses, busy having though. dinners with his girlfriend. It's like, what, about what the title means for Triple H, and that that is success, right? You, you mentioned his girlfriend. You know, he's dating the most, the top act in women's wrestling today. He's got the Intercontinental Championship. He's in the shape of his life. Shawn Michaels isn't here. Life is going good for Triple H. Can he retain his title tonight, though? That's Yeah, that's not what the IC title is about. It's about the struggle. And nobody epitomizes the struggle more than Tommy Dreamer. Mm. He struggles every day of his life. Can he struggle to victory here tonight? Will he just struggle? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Let's go. Hell yeah. <laughs> the game. Hell yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we were hoping this would, uh, well, at least I was, I was hoping this would bang yeah, pretty yeah, well. Yeah, What's same. up with Ric Flair and Jerry Lawler have pretty good chemistry <laughs> when calling matches together? Dude, it's the, it, it literally is the horn dog squad. Oh my God. <laughs> um, they're, they're going crazy on comps. Um, yeah, this is really fucking good. <laughs> I'll be honest. So yeah, this is this is like a nice back and forth match where Triple H just beats the shit. Sorry, I said nice and back and forth. A long drawn out match where Triple H beats yeah, there you the go. shit out of the <laughs> Dreamer for the most part, and Dreamer occasionally gets fire, you know, baby face flashes until a ref bump occurs, and then the the weapons come out, and it becomes an absolute smoke and mirrors masterpiece with a couple of built two spots, maybe a table spot. Uh, so, you know, Tommy Dreamer maybe gets a barbed wire two by four to attack triple h with at some point yep. uh triple h gets a sledgehammer but maybe dreamer uses it first and triple h is like no my sledgehammer how could you uh but then eventually trish stratus manages to th grab the sledgehammer off a of dreamer and slip it to triple h and he slams dreamer in the head with it he pedigrees him and he retains the intercontinental championship hell yeah that's a really dope match we should use yeah, tommy yeah. dreamer more I'm joking <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't hate Tommy Dreamer, you know. <laughs> really, he's perfect for this kind of thing. I was gonna say he is this specific idea, this match, and where this is, and what Triple H is doing right now. This was like very perfect, in my yeah. opinion. Um, yeah, Dreamer is a great guy for this spot. Very much, very much the everyman. I like the image also of after the match, Triple H like being helped to the back by Trish the icy title around his shoulder and just blood all over his face and in his hair. and But he's got this grin on his face like, hell yeah, this is the good life. Hell yeah, man. Um, What do we got next? <laughs> oh yeah, we've got highlights oh, of the new go. breed. I, I already brought it up, but these three, this trio specifically, is undefeated. Um, for I, Yeah, they've been around for like a year now. WWE title match. The other two are world tag team champions right now. It is a uh, one. It dare I say 
one of the most successful factions in the history of the WWE, which is pretty impressive for a team that was supposed to be led with uh, by by RSD, and he completely rejected them. And then they were originally brought in, branded as Paul Heyman's new breed, and Paul Heyman's nowhere to be seen. I feel like the new breed were set up to fail. And they took that as a chip on their shoulder and they never looked back because everything that they've gotten on this brand, they have not just earned, but they've taken from somebody else and they've clawed it out of their hands by force. And the new breed are here to stay. And tonight they're going to show that by beating down the world's greatest tag team and whoever the hell they've managed to rustle up as their third. Charlie Haas comes out on the stage and announces... Him and Shelton Benjamin's partner. I was supposed to say guest partner, but he's not a guest. So yeah. Charlie's going to talk about how already in DMLS, you know, the new breed like to think that they are the model for the next generation, but they lack respect, they lack hustle, and they lack loyalty. Here, DMLS, oh my. they de- <laughs> I didn't realize that's what I was teasing. <laughs> DMLS, we teach the the right way you know look back the history lance storm dean malenko arn anderson the legacy of dmls is coursing through my veins and i owe it to the world to give back the gifts that i have been given and look at the names that i have managed to bring into the fold dibiase rhodes Wrestling legacies, wrestling heritage. So I knew when I needed a tag team partner tonight that I needed to go back to the well once more. I needed to look deep and find somebody from a wrestling legacy, from a heritage, but not just any wrestling heritage, the wrestling heritage. So ladies and gentlemen, new breed, You're not just going to be facing the world's greatest tag team. You're also going to be facing one of the world's greatest young up-and-coming superstars. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to Manu. And this big Samoan man comes out. And he's big. Yeah. Yeah. He's big. Here we go. No holds barred. Okay. All right. Um, oh, that's what I expected. <laughs> I expected, um, but it's fine. It's not about the rating. It's about the war. And these guys brawl in a no holds barred setting all across the arena for over 20 minutes before even a single elimination happens. Because these three men on the right know that they've got a, a streak to uphold. They have a, a legacy to protect. And these three men on the left, they've been fighting well, Charlie specifically, but really the whole spirit of Raw is behind uh, this this all-star tag team tonight as the new breed have been not main antagonists here on Raw, but certainly they haven't made any friends here on this brand. And I think everybody's sort of behind Haas, Benjamin and Manu tonight as they try and take it to the new breed. And better, more than any other team before them, they really do take it to the new breed. And you can see by the length of the match and the lengths that these guys have to go to that they really have to go to war with those guys. They have to brawl. They have to jump off of whatever they can find. They have to throw them throughout the arena. It turns into absolute carnage and chaos as uh, Haas, Benjamin, and Manu try to wrench that streak away from them. And the real turning point comes when they're back in the ring and Manu and Corvon square off. And eventually Benjamin manages to... uh, alongside the help of Manu, hit Corvon with that big T-bone suplex and eliminate him from the match. And even though there are still twists and turns to come, that moment where Benjamin pins Corvon is the moment where everybody in this match realizes the streak's on the line. And this could very well go the other way. And eventually, finally, uh, Manu manages to to, to pin Kenny Dykstra, the last member of the new breed, and the streak is over here at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. I love so much that elimination matches in this game. You can set a loser <laughs> and they're just like, ah, I don't really care, actually. I'll do what I feel like. Fuck you. Yep. 
Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. It's very funny. They give you the option and then just ignore it. They're like, "Ah, no, actually, we'll, we'll, I'll make it how I want." Shout out, shout out. Uh, but yeah, the new breed streak is over. Holy shit! Big win for Manu. Also, uh, yep. he gets that final pin off. Um, on his debut. Does Does DMLS have a new member? Yeah, it's a really good question. We'll have to watch and see. Oh, thank you, Snake. <laughs> Comes up, it's just like, Kenny's a dumb fuck. He almost <laughs> killed Shelton. I like how that one said visibly angry. I had one in Birmingham <laughs> the other day where it said visibly upset, and now I am thinking he was just crying. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Kino Aji was just like, he tried to kill me, man. I Kino swear. Aji is a very emotional young man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania ad. Buy some I mean, tickets. We'll see you in Orlando. Corey. What kind of stuff yeah, expecting Japanese literally man called though, Corey? Corey. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, he's his name is Corey. That's Sounds insane. Like Corey in the house, literally. <laughs> Corey, you sigh. Um Yeah. WrestleMania ad. Uh and now we it's time for our main event. We go. Dave run the You wanna set this one up? Yeah, sure. Dave ran the gauntlet. You know, he we watched him. You all watched him on uh, SNME the Ultimate, or just sorry, SNME Ultimate. That's it's not the <laughs> ultimate. I promise. Don't sue us. Um, SNME Ultimate. Uh, we watched him run the tournament. Uh, he did so in remarkable time, remarkable fashion. Um, something about Dave that I think we've known this whole time is that he is much better when he is able to get something done quickly. You know what I mean? He's much better at just overpowering somebody with his with his power, overpowering somebody with his power. Yeah, sure, that's a yeah. sentence. Um, but using his power to take control very quickly, and for Dave Batista, it always has felt like the longer something goes, and we saw this a little bit in his matches with Chavo. The longer some of these fights go, the more Dave kind of gets out of his element. Um, being a like a, like a heavier guy like Dave is, and I mean that in the best way, like he's a big muscly guy. Um, it takes a lot out of you to work a uh like like a high level fight for that long. Um and I think the really interesting thing is that Ken Shamrock is kind of the same way. Ken's a little older now. Um there's a chance that I mean it's definitely when he was younger he could definitely take you into those uh yeah. like later stretches, those deeper waters and stuff like that and put you away. But who who knows? I mean Ken could probably still do it. Um but the way we've seen him we get things seen done. It, yeah. I was gonna say the way we've seen him get things done up to and including this championship reign has been by pretty much finding the opening, right? Yeah. Like he, he threads the needle, finds the opening, whatever the thing that Ken Shamrock needs to do, he gets done. He finds a way to do it. Um, it yeah. It's, it's, it's very exciting sell folks. Cause I mean, as Tucker's just said, neither of these men like to go the distance. So we should be in for some, some fireworks here tonight. Here we go. World heavyweight title on the line. The animal against the world. No, it's the, the world's most dangerous, dangerous man. man on the yes, planet. it is. Oh, it's the most dangerous man on the planet. Thank you. Who is the world's most dangerous man? That's Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine like being in like a semi <laughs> the same sort of industry as Tyson, being like, I'm gonna kind of rip your name. Sorry, pal. Um. Crazy. I think somebody uh, else gave Shamrock that name. By the way, I think it came from like a news outlet or something. Oh. You did. I think you're right. Where did I see that? Where did I see that? I'm not sure. Because I've seen this as well, wherever that is. I think you're right. Um, either way. At Madison Square Garden, main event, lights on bright, WWE.com direct, Batista Shamrock. Let's go. And these two do, in fact, throw bo bombs. They... Pull no punches as these two men kind of it takes a couple minutes for them to like get their distance right because Batista Batista's in a rough spot here because technically from a striking perspective he's weaker than Shamrock Shamrock's strikes are just 
like, he has better technique on them, right? Whether it's kicks, whether it's punches. Shamrock's just got, you know, a, a stronger understanding of what makes a strike effective. Batista, on the other hand, has a hell of a lot more power behind that. We saw the weigh-ins on Friday. Batista's got around 25 pounds on Shamrock, at least. And that was, you know, during cut times, right? So there's so much more power behind those strikes, but there's no technique behind them. And then when it comes to the ground game, it's the exact same story. Batista's not a wrestler, right? He, he's, he's by and large, a striker. Um, Shamrock's so much stronger on the ground than Batista. That might be where he, he gets the advantage. Here's the problem. Batista's fucking huge. And if you try and get into a ground game with Batista, you're going to be carrying a lot of that weight a lot of the time. Or he's going to be able to use that weight to get out of your holds. So Shamrock's in this difficult spot where he's so much stronger technically, but Batista's got such a physical advantage that these two are, are you know, they're, they're actually quite evenly matched but shamrock because he's at the physical disadvantage knows that that doesn't necessarily favor him so he's going for some pretty high risk moves we're talking he's shooting shooting the legs he's going for takedowns he's trying to get holes he's trying to uh, lock something in that's going to scare batista enough that he, he's going to want to tap just like we should have seen at SummerSlam, right at SummerSlam, ken locked in a leg lock a heel hook that Taker should have tapped to if he was a, a mere mortal man. But because he's the dead man, he just had his leg broken. And Ken knows, you know what, Batista can tap or he can have his leg broken. It doesn't really matter. I win the match either way. So that's his plan. That's what he's hoping to go for. And at some point, though, um, Batista, man you know, because Batista's got that strength advantage, Batista manages to get on top of Shamrock and start throwing some strikes of his own. And one of those strikes just rings Shamrock's bell. Just a forearm straight to the forehead that cuts him straight open and you can see he's completely out of it but in that split second when he goes under instinct immediately kicks in and he gets a Kimura lock on Batista because he's in the perfect position for it and Flair on comms and Lawler on comms are going to put over that Shamrock might not even be, be fully aware of what he's doing right now but he's got Batista deep cinched into this Kimura lock and this could be it. Batista's arm could snap right here, right now, and Shamrock could retain. More than that, Batista's talked about wanting to be world champion. If he breaks his arm right here, he's not going to be world champion by the end of the year. No chance. So Batista has a really quick decision to make. And eventually, he digs deep within his heart, digs deep within that fire in his soul, and he powers Shamrock up and slams him against the turnbuckle. Shamrock, by the way, is still probably out of it from that strike. That creates enough distance. Batista hits the ropes. Massive spear as MSG erupts and Batista starts shaking the ropes, kind of snapping himself back into it, making sure that arm is still there. It is. Has he got enough power to lift him up for the Batista bomb? He does. One, two, three. And for the fourth time in his illustrious career, Batista is the world heavyweight champion the animal is back on top of the food chain hell yeah hell yeah boo fuck manu <laughs> yeah, yeah like, this is all because of manu they're like fuck this guy actually sorry uh who do you want to talk to here uh dreamer dreamer and triple h i think yep yep they did real well good job boys tommy dreamer twice yep that's what i meant I just want to talk to Tommy. <laughs> I think maybe um, Sh Shamrock. Tell him he's sure, awesome. Yeah. Because this is the yeah. end of his run, really. Yeah, thank you for coming and hanging out, man. It's good stuff. You were better than the great Kali. Damn, can't, Shamrock didn't even <laughs> respond. He just no, like he was, walked it was, away. It was Triple H that didn't respond because he's mad at us. Oh, I see. Triple H just, <laughs> we hugged Triple H. Triple H just like, <laughs> no, he off. refuses the hug. Damn. Damn. What a bastard. Um, yeah. We did it. I gotta do some deals, apparently. <laughs> on the on, on the back end. Uh, anything else we want to talk about here, buddy, before we get out of here on the video? Make sure you check out Tucker's cool tier list video he did. Um, yep. and then also make sure you tune back in. You're for also next there, time. you know, you're, you're also, I, I might even go as far to say is you're half of that. I was going to leave that as to be a surprise for the audience. Oh, fair, fair. Uh, it does have your name in the fucking title though. There's two, like, there's two ways that could have gone. Either they were pleasantly surprised that I was there 
In which case, wow, that's cool. I, I've, had, I've, had a, I've had a pleasant surprise. Or they're like, oh, fuck, this putty guy's this here guy, as well. This guy, god damn but it. That, but by that point, Tucker, they've already clicked on the video. So we mm. win either way. Genius. Uh, make sure you tune back in for S Enemy 13 Homecoming, which is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hmm. Wonder what's going to go on there. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh... We got some links below the VOD's channel and Putty's channel, the Patreon, if you want to support us or something like that. Um, I promise. Yeah. I've been talking about this for a while, but now is the perfect time to do it because the S enemies have really diluted our old format. We will do a Patreon revamp soon, TM. At least, I'm going to say, by May, I, I, will, I will work on a Patreon revamp. Cool. And with that... We're out of here. Peace, folks. Cool. We're done. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Good awesome. Shit. awesome. Good shit. What? Quickly. Manu is born in the Rumble 2015. Yeah. <laughs> just like, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. No. No, I reject. I reject that. Uh, whoa, Kenny Omega. Well, that's Johnny Fairplay. Oh, my bad. I should know. I say that enough, actually. Fair play, fair play. Every time I say fair play, it is Kevin Kelly. Oh, nice, nice. I think, I, I think I've said that to you before, right? Where it's the... I don't know what G1 it was, but it was the one G1 fair where play. Yato was like... Yeah, where Yato was like, I'm going to not cheat. And then he'd try to cheat, and Kevin Kelly would scream at him on comps. Free play, Yano! Fair play, Yano! No! Fair play! Fair play, Yano! No! Yeah, no uh, shrug. Yeah, and he'd just be like, mm, I, don't, I don't know, dog. I'm just doing my thing over here. <laughs> Hitting people with detached turnbuckle pads. <laughs> I love that so that's based. like a... Yeah. I love that's like a New Japan weapon. It's like a big... It's just a big <laughs> cushion. And they're like, oh, he killed him with it. Oh, my God. It's just like boxing gloves, Tucker, because it's so padded, you can hit him harder. Mmm. Mmm. Because there's like solid it. steel inside that turnbuckle pad. Oh, is there now? It's like a... It's a steel pole <laughs> wrapped in hard plastic. Yeah. It hurts. Look. I'm also... Those those pads don't have a lot of give, Tucker. If I hit you with like a, a pool noodle, you'd feel it. Is all I'm saying. Mm, mm. Yeah, those shit. That's, those things got some force behind them. That's true. The the pool noodle is a good shout, actually. Yeah. The buckle pads have names too. Huh. Interesting. Let's see our four time world heavyweight champion, Dave Batista. Let's do it. There he is. There he is. He's Big back Dave. on top. He is world heavyweight champion. Will he hold it till the end of the I'm year? I'm going to say, can he hold it his now? Promise. We, should, we should tell Dave he fucked up. Because it's like, Dave, you could have just won it in December. And then you would have. Now you've got to hold on to it for like many months. That's that's so dumb. dumb, Ray. Why would, What do you mean? This is a world title. I can't just choose when I get to win it. I have to try every time. Ah, uh, sure you couldn't. I've seen the new GM. You haven't, clearly. <laughs> yeah, but it's not just about getting the match, Ray. I've got to win the match, too, bro. <laughs> like, Batista just doesn't think he'll win. He's just like, I'd lose. No, but I think he understands that in the nature of competition, you can't just wait till December and hope you win that one shot. You just got to try as much as you can. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh... Uh, yeah, okay, this is a good example. I think you'll get this. It's like if you need to win one of your remaining matches to make the playoffs of a tournament, of a, of a, of a, of a season, right? Yep, and you've got yep, five I hear you. left. You don't just leave it till the last day. You try to win it as no, quickly as you can. No, because every single every yeah. single one of those losses, the pressure builds. Yeah. Yep. And you can never predict, you know, oh yeah, we'll just win the last one or something. No, you gotta, you gotta you know, that's not how sports works. Uh, For real. Okay. Cool. I think all that's good. These guys yeah. don't even have gimmicks. Yeah, that. I noticed that last time, but I forgot to mention it. I guess just like this and just be Maybe like... Maybe we don't give them gimmicks. And like that's part of the bit. And then once once they become relevant, that's when we give them gimmicks. I think that not giving them gimmicks will just bomb everything that they're in, though. That's fine. They're, they're not doing anything relevant. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. 
right. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't think any. I, I, we could check some pops on people, but I don't think it's super relevant. Yeah, um, I don't think it'll be tremendously changed, right? Like, no. Who, who I are you thinking? Maybe like Manu, Dave. Yeah, Manu's up. Yep, that's good. Um, Batista. Looking good. I think that's the same. Changed, but it's good. Yeah, anyway. it's the same. Uh, anybody else win anything? Big last night. Umaga probably would have gone. Sure, up yeah, play. yeah, sure. Check out Umaga. Doesn't look super over, but he did go up. Yeah, there you go. He went up quite a bit. Yeah. Is Henry okay? He's probably fine. He'll be fine anyways. He can yeah. build it back. He's fine. Yeah, yeah he's fine. he's pretty much like he's very much in the big show situation of like. Unfortunately, we'll often lose the big match because he's so good at just recouping his own pop later on. Like, how is the big show's pop these days? Oh, Big Show's fine. Oh, Big he's not—he's not bad. He's not at his peak though. He's—he's he's no, not he's put like, that pop all, you know that quickly. I mean, we didn't use him throughout this whole period. So. Yeah, I don't know. You were you doing kill that you. thing? I'll he was kill the you. Extreme giant. You're not allowed to just lie. <laughs> <laughs> he's not been around. I, don't you lie on my angles. man's name? He's done. Give it. He was the extreme giant there for a bit. And his pop is up. It's up. Wow, <laughs> that's only lately. Who do we uh, who do we have him beat? You see, he lost to the children. That would be he lost to he lost to new breed people twice in a row. That would kill anybody's pop. Whoa! What are you trying to say, Tucker? What are you trying to say? Uh, also, Triple H got that eighty eight while having morale issues. Can we talk about what a based god Triple H is right now? It was all Tommy Dreamer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> And now Triple H gets to have a feud with Umaga, brother. It's going to be so big. That is going to be heat. That is going to be heat. I immediately, the moment you said, like, Umaga, Triple H, I was like, I want to see that more than... Yeah. More than was, Triple H, Henry. They did, I think they did it with Babyface Triple H IRL. I think they did, right? Oh, well, I'm they sure they, they did. No Mercy, didn't they? That was one of the matches, but... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you're right. You're right. No, I think that match was pretty good, if I remember correctly, so... Yeah. It feels like it would be good. Yeah. That's like my gut instinct. It's like Umaga's a mobile big, and then Triple H is a kind of stationary muscle guy. Muscle man. It makes sense in my head, but maybe it doesn't when I say it like that. Because I'm right. just like, one guy moves, the other guy doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's the immovable object versus the immoving object. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Let's... End the stream. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you guys next time for the Fallout shows. And finally, we can go two weeks without a, like the last couple of SNMEs. It's literally been like, a, here's the Fallout week, here's the Go Home week, here's the Fallout yep. week, here's the Go Home week. So we have a little bit more of a stretch now. And for SmackDown, we're sort of in Survivor Series season. So hell yeah, yeah, a little bit more meat on those bones. So we'll see you guys next time. To start picking through them. <laughs>